Hey guys, those communications, welcome to my review of Fade to Black. Fade to Black is a 1993 made for TV film. As you can see, it's a screening copy. Um, this is actually something that another uh, video that a good friend of mine on YouTube, uh, Bill Bon Jovi, sent me. And he wanted to know my thoughts on it, so I checked it out and it's not it's not it's not a classic it's not where no not anywhere near being as good as the other fade to black movie that comes to mind you know with uh with dennis christopher 1980 film but i didn't really hate it either i found it to be watchable nice little bit of entertainment so in that respect it was worth it you know so it was an, it's really not one of those super memorable movies Basically what it is, the gist of the plot is this, Timothy Busfield plays a, a professor who basically he studies uh, human behavior. And he does this by recording people, you know, with his camera. And he, won one of these sessions, he, you know, he accidentally, he basically records a murder. So you have the typical sort of, oh, he recorded a murder and now he's trying to f figure out who did it and gets the help of his friend who works at, as a video, you know, editor slash, you know, uh, probably this, he, he touches up videos and stuff like that on campus. So he gets the help from him to work on some things, to try to, you know, get the video blown up so we can see who it is, which I don't even think that technology even existed even back in 1993, but maybe it did to get super crystal clear photos off of like a fuzzy video, out of focus video? I, I don't think so. That's that's going into sci-fi territory there. But basically what happens is you have a decent, it's directed by John McPherson who directed um, Incident at Deception Ridge. And to be honest, I, I would probably say I like this more than Incident at Deception Ridge. It was a little bit more satisfying. It actually didn't really piss me off, you know, with its ending like the like Incident and Deception Ridge did. But overall, there's not really much that I can really say to recommend this film. I mean, to really go out and grab, catch it, you really go out and search long, you know, low and high for Fade to Black with Timothy Busfield and Heather Locklear. Right? I can't really say that. But, you know, it's definitely... One of those movies, it's a time waster. You put it on, you can enjoy it for what it is and not really, really, not really get too involved, but not really get bored. It's, it's like TV movies back in the 90s were kind of like that. They were just basically ways to pass the time. And Fade the Black is definitely one of those. Honestly, it's probably my favorite Timothy Busfield film other than the Revenge of, Nerds, Revenge of the Nerds movies. Because I don't like strays, and I don't like trucks. Both those movies suck, in my opinion. This, I didn't get upset with, like I did with strays and trucks. Here, yes, it's a generic, you know, paint-by-numbers thriller, where, you know, he discovers that, you know, something's going on, trying to be suspenseful, but not really. There's shots in the film that look really cheap, they look even cheaper than cheap, if, if you know what I mean. Like, I know it's a TV movie, but dang, this some of the shots in this film look like they're from, like, a reenactment on Unsolved Mysteries. Um, but I actually was drawn into the film. I was actually interested in what was going on and the mystery it was building. Because it then tries to, it pulls one of those, you know, it's a lot like Rear Window. They're, you know, instead of having... Cary Grant, I think. I think that's who it was in Rear Window. I'm not super big familiar with Hitchcock's film. And so he, instead of having, you know, Cary Grant or in a wheelchair, it's Cloris Leachman in a wheelchair. And Timothy Busfield is the one that witnesses the murder. And Cloris Leachman is just basically, Cloris Leachman's basically in this film as the friend of Timothy Busfield who comes and visits him every now and then in his apartment. And listens to his band, big band music and can stand his clarinet playing because he likes to play clarinet. He serenades her with a clarinet. And there's like a really awkward scene where he bends over to maybe kiss her and, and he's like, I shouldn't do it. And I'm like, yeah, you shouldn't because that's just weird. And um, 
then she basically she comes in and basically drinks all his booze. That's it. He drinks all his alcohol and then she wheels away. I mean, it's really not much of a role for Cloris Leachman, but she's not terrible. So basically what you find out is that Timothy Busfield, his character, he thinks that this person is dead. Like, he thinks that, um, thinks that he sees this girl get murdered by, of all people, Michael Beck. So here's Michael Beck again in another sort of, he's in another uh, TV movie. And I definitely probably say I liked him more in Deadly Game. He was pretty much a badass in that. Here, he plays a killer. He plays like a guy who's like the manager of a rave. And he loses it. His name is Draith. Or his name is actually his name is Braith. His name is Braith. And, uh, you know... <laughs> And he has, for some reason, I don't know whose decision this was, either it was Michael Beck's, or it was the director, John McPherson, or the producers, or the writers, or whatever, or the people at USA Network, which I think was when this was aired. And <laughs> he basically, he has this ridiculous Irish accent. Like the first time you hear his character talk, he speaks, sounds like he's like Lucky from the Lucky Charms commercials. It is just so out of place and laughable. It's like, next time you, you know, he's just, he's just, uh, next time I see you, that won't be a second time. You said, it, it's, I can't even do it that well. I can't do a good Irish accent. But in this episode, I have expected Michael Beck to start you know, advertising for Lucky Charms. It was really, honestly, goofy. But then, as the, as the film goes along and plods along on its plot, and it introduces uh, Timothy Busfield and the audience to Heather Locklear, and she's hot and as sexy as ever in this film, and and very beautiful, and her acting isn't that isn't isn't spectacular, but it's not terrible either. It's just like Timothy Busfield. Two decent actors in one movie that have decent chemistry. <laughs> um, so basically what happens is my, Timothy Busfield sort of falls in love with her. It makes The film makes you believe they might be able to spark a connection with each other. There's a weird... There's a scene where... <laughs> Timothy Busfield admits to her that, you know, I feel like we have this connection. And yeah, I was like... And I was looking over and watching you, and, and I felt like we had this connection. And she's like, you were watching me? And he's like, yeah, because I felt we had, like, this connection with each other. And he asked her, like, is that weird? And then, like, she makes out with them. And I'm like, what? That's, that doesn't... <laughs> yeah, try that next time, folks. Try that with a hot chick like Heather Locklear. Admit that you were spying on her like a pervert. And then ask her if that's weird. And try not to get kneed in the balls or slapped in the face. Or any number of unmentionable things done to you or your body. For even, even considering admitting that kind of, you know, cardinal sin to such a hot lady. Good luck with that one. You're not going to get tail with that, with, that, uh, with that approach. But it works in this movie. So basically, the whole the whole sort of shebang comment gets the end, near the end of the film. It's only like eighty-four minutes too, so it never really had never really overstays its welcome. So that's another good thing. It's short. It's to the point. Gets to it really quickly, and doesn't really make it very memorable. But it, it was entertaining for what it was. I wasn't really pissed off or annoyed or aggravated, and I could definitely see why some people might find this boring and really not much of anything. And I wouldn't blame them. Um, so basically what happens is the whole sort of cliche where now Timothy Busfield is n suspect number one in the murder case and uh, Braith is going around killing people involved with the murder. Uh, Heather Locklear gives him some information, gives him the iron that Braith used to kill the other girl and also gives gives him like a bloody piece of cloth. They go into a trash like a uh, collection place and they go look for the body of the girl that you know, Timothy Busfield's character, who's, you know, uh, Professor Del Cal, Del Cav, Del, uh, uh, Professor Del Calvin, believes that, you know, the, the, the body might be there, and they go and look for it, you know, with Heather Locklear's character, Victoria, 
and you also find out that this character Victoria is, is supposed to be the dead girl, so, and then you're kind of like, huh, what's going on? And while he finds the body in the dumpster, uh, Michael Beck shows up and kidnaps Victoria, who you think is Victoria at the time, but of course you know it's not, but Timothy Busfield doesn't, and then he tries to go after her, and Michael Beck gets away with it, and then that's when you find out later that she's supposed to be dead, and of course Timothy Busfield's like, huh, what? And Michael Beck he actually ends up killing his best friend, the video guy, because, you know, it takes the tape, so there's no evidence, so now the cops are going after Timothy Busfield, going after Del Calvin, and he ends up deciding he escapes from the cops, they're going to arrest him, and he escapes on a motorcycle, ends up going to the rave where Michael Beck is. You have this, you just, this film also proves why 90s techno music sucked. It was so fucking terrible. And it's, it's like 90s techno dance music was horrible. And it's even it's just listening to this rave scene was like, I'm like, this is the lamest rave ever. The same song we're playing over and over again. It's like something like, let's dance now or let's go now or something. I'm like, yeah, my ears are bleeding now. Can we stop this? And Timothy Busfield is in the club and. Uh, the DJ who works for Michael Beck's character sees him, and he's like, he makes a phone call to Michael Beck. It's like, he's in here, go after him, and tries to chase after him. And, my, you know, Timothy Busfield goes into a room somewhere in the club and then finds Ever Locklear, and she's has a different hair color. And you find out the blonde hair she was wearing was a wig, and she really was, she really was the actress or so, so that there's a person that. Victoria, when Heather Locklear was masquerading as Victoria, she talked about an actress named Danielle, I think, that was murdered. But you find out it's really Victoria that was murdered, and Danielle is actually Heather Locklear's character who masqueraded as Victoria, and they killed her to get all her money from this trust fund and her Michael Beck cohorts. And I actually didn't mind that because I didn't see that coming. Some people probably might have, but I didn't. So, yeah. Didn't see that coming at all. So then they, then there's a sort of scuffle between you know Locklear and Busfield and Michael Beck, Michael Beck and and Timothy Busfield getting a little fist to cuff, which isn't really much of anything, and he throws him through a window and he falls to his death. You know, lands on a table in the club. Heather Locklear's pissed. The cops show up just in time, put a gun to her head. Busfield's hanging off for dear life on the edge of the of the window windowsill and the cop who was accused of him earlier picks you know grabs his hand saves him and then that's pretty much the end of the film so really like i said not really much to really say about fade to black other than it was sufficiently entertaining for the time being it's a time waster at best i'm not like i said i'm not gonna say go out and get this movie right now no it, it was for a TV movie, it wasn't half bad. So it wasn't anything that I really hated or anything that I particularly really loved, but it was it was in the middle. It was one of those middling, you know, so-so, you know, mediocre films for me that was watchable for the time, you know, for like a time waster. And um, probably the best Timothy Busfield I've seen, film I've seen, you know, the Wrench and the Nerds, and I know I'm repeating myself. But really, there's not much else I can say about this movie except those few things here and there. And other than that, I really don't know what else to say, except it was going to rate Fade to Black out of five stars. I'd probably give it, because I liked it more than Incident at Deception Ridge, i will probably give it three. Three out of five, which is usually the rating I give for a so-so mediocre, you know, run-of-the-mill film. And that's really what it is. It's a run-of-the-mill run movie. It's not. It's definitely one of the better TV movies I've seen, I've seen a lot worse. So anyway, thanks for watching my review of Fade to Black with Timothy Busfield and Heather Locklear. And I will see you guys later. See ya.